Welcome to Getting Clean on the Prairies. So we are down now to the last of all the uh, seedlings that I need to get planted out into my garden for this season. And so I, th I thought this would be a good time to do another winter sowing versus uh, indoor growing challenge update just to show you what I have left to put in the ground and give you some um, comparisons on how things are looking here. So I have a few, I'm gonna do an herb herb garden um, in my flower bed. So I wanted to just show you some of the herbs that I did in the winter sowing method and also planted from seed. So this is here, the dill um, in the winter sowing jug and the dill in the, uh, from seed. So they're pretty much at the same stage right now. So um, I think I, well, the dill was planted in the winter sowing jug in early February. So it sat outside in the, in the cold for a while, but um, they pretty much started growing and uh, are doing pretty much the same. I'd say this one maybe is looking a little bit uh, bigger, but pretty much pretty close in comparison to each other. Um, what else do I got? Parsley. So this is the parsley that was in my jug looking a little yellow I think it's you know needing to get out into the sun and get growing and then this is the one that I started from seed indoors so like I say it kind of uh, one starts out a little faster than the other but once these start taking off in the jugs they um, they seem to catch up so this parsley was put outside February 28th and this parsley was planted indoors on April the 4th. Rosemary and basil, I started in both winter sowing jugs and from seed indoors. These are the two that I did indoors. Um, the basil and the rosemary didn't, uh, didn't grow in my winter jugs. So not sure why. I thought the basil would for sure because it's pretty, pretty hardy. Rosemary is uh, a very slow growing plant so we're going to try putting it in the ground and we'll see see if it uh, survives or not so these are four other herbs that i started winter sowing um, i didn't do any um, from seed indoors but they're doing really good now this is some thyme started february 28th some mint uh, i'm not sure this was also planted out February 28th in the jug. Sage, February 28th. And the oregano. So all these herbs were put outdoors February 28th. They were pretty much frozen for a month or so and they were started germinating probably not until um, I guess end of April, early May, and they're looking pretty healthy. So we're gonna plant them out today. So the results of my perennial flowers and my annuals that I put in um, winter sowing jugs were a little bit uh, varied as far as good and bad results. I'm not sure why, but um, some things did well, some things didn't do as good. Um, my lupins were very strong, these ones are planted in February 28th and I also did some from seed indoors um, that did very well and I've already planted those out into my flower bed so we're just going to add these ones from the winter sowing jugs today. Um, Kalinja not so good it was very slow to start uh, or very slow to germinate but now I see that there's more coming um, in this in the, here now so I'm not sure if I'm gonna wait and just leave them in here or maybe just try to plant out this one anyway but these were from February 28th and these two perennials here that I started um was just about to give up on them and dump the dump the dirt out these are a cone 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 flower so this was one of the very first um, seeds that I started with the winter sowing and that was on January 23rd, the cone flower. And then I started some asters January 12th. 
These I thought would do better because they are perennials and they're cold hardy and they need to go through stratification. And But um, like I said, I was ready to uh, give up on them. And now they're finally starting to, to, to germinate and sprout here. And it is the 6th of June already. But, you know, I'm not going to give up on them now if they're going to they want to grow I'll just leave them in here maybe um, see how they manage in these containers over the summer and uh, uh, transplant them early fall so that maybe they can take hold and survive the winter and um, pop up next spring in my flower beds the butterfly weed was another one that um, I didn't think was coming along here it was one of the very first perennials I started in January and now it's actually starting to uh, come along and then I see there's a couple more coming here so I'm just gonna keep them in these jugs and until uh, they get you know better established as a strong seedling and uh, add them to the butterfly weeds that I started from seed that are already in the flower bed and a couple other things I started both by seed indoors and in the jugs was the sweet peas. So I got a little batch here that I'm going to add to my ones that I've already planted out. And I got sunflowers coming here looking pretty healthy, which I'm very happy about because the sunflowers I planted started from seed indoors, um, got froze, and a few of them don't look like they're going to uh, grow very good so um, this is when the winter sowing method kind of won the show because uh, these survived because they were kept warm in these jugs during the the late frost that we got this spring and now they're healthy and ready to go into the ground okay so this is the area that I um, have designated to be my herb garden spot as you can see I already have some chives coming back from last year so I'm going to plant up my herbs that I have in my winter sowing jugs here in this area. So kind of one downfall I think for the winter sowing method is, you know, trying to get your transplants out of these some of these containers, depending on the container that you're using and depending on the plant and how many's in there, it can get kind of tricky getting them out safely and into the ground. Um, the dill, there was just one plant. I didn't get it on video, but it was easy just to cut the, the one plant out of that one. But um, with something like this, when you got this thyme and you got a whole bunch of it and trying to wedge the whole thing out of here safely, I was finding a little bit challenging. So I haven't quite figured out what the easy method is I'm taking my knife and trying to loosen it all around because it's kind of a big root ball without risking hurting the plants um, it's really hard to get them to come out and you shake and you end up losing a lot of dirt the only other method I could see that would um, be easy is to actually cut the container you know down the side or push from the bottom here somehow to try and get these to come out but I'm gonna be lazy and keep trying this way because I don't feel like going and finding a knife right now so there is the time I'm just going to kind of break it up a little bit just to spread it out and then plant it in this area here. So if anybody has a, any tips or tricks about getting your plants safely out of your uh, winter sowing jugs, please leave um, your tips in the comments.
So there's my time. So is there a winner to my winter sewing versus indoor growing challenge? Well, based on my personal experiences this growing season, I'm going to call it a tie. Uh, I really enjoyed using both methods for various reasons. And, you know, the indoor starts for me had a higher success rate and I was able to grow a large variety of different vegetables, flowers and herbs. But indoor growing does come at a cost, though, as you need to space to grow and depending on how big your setup is, shelving, grow lights and other equipment can get quite expensive. And care and maintenance um, of your plants requires your attention pretty much every day. Uh, the winter sowing method has a fairly low startup cost and once you have things planted up there's basically no effort required until early spring when things start to sprout. But the spring weather plays a big part in the success of winter sowing I found. And this year we had warm days early in the spring followed by very cold temperatures um, which caused you know premature sprouting and then some care and maintenance required to prevent freezing and keeping the containers properly watered. And of course, patience is a big thing with winter sowing because they are slower than the indoor starts. And, but as you've seen in my results, they eventually catch up. And at the end of the day, for me, it's really about just doing something that I enjoy. And I like trying new things and just learning from my successes and failures. So I hope that you enjoyed this series of videos about my winter sewing and indoor growing experiences. I also hope that you will like, leave a comment, and continue to follow along with me on my real life adventures on the Saskatchewan prairies. Thank you for watching.